Hello there, I'm Luca Ricci and I'm a composer. In today's lesson, we will talk about chordioids and expanded tonality. What is a chordioid? A chordioid is a group of musical notes which does not qualify as a chord under a given chord theory. Some of the harmonies, which are usually classified as a chordioid in Anglo-Saxon regions of the world, that we can find are chords with the omission of the third, sustained chords, which we know are usually the result of counterpoint, superimposition of different tonal functions with or without omissions, added notes to a given harmony, harmonies which goes over the tonal functions of ninth chords, and other groups of notes. Let's take a closer look to each example. All through music history we can find vertical harmonies which omits the third. In medieval and renaissance music, in cadences was quite common to find omit third chords, which were actually considered as the most consonant harmonies apart from the octave, which was the most consonant. In later music, this was used to remind the listener of this ancient taste in music, like we can hear in Veris Letafaces from Karlolf's Carmina Burana, where two parallel fifths are used to give a sense of ancient, to anticipate the Gregorian melody which follows. In modern music, this kind of harmony is used all throughout pop, rock, metal and every other genre of commercial music. Sustained chords, which we early defined as the result of counterpuntal practices in music, can often be read and used as part of a harmony without resolving the dissonance on the third. The superimposition of different tonal functions, also of different tonalities, can generate some quite interesting results, which have been used throughoutly in 1900s. One example is from Igor Stravinsky's Petrushka, where he superimposes a C major over an F sharp major chord, at the distance of a trident, creating a very unique timbre and harmony.
Another example is in Charles Ives Unanswered Question, in which on a modal harmony played by the strings, the woodwinds and the solo trumpet plays various chordoids and polytonal melodies. Another kind of chordioid is the ad chord. This type of harmony is very common in cinematic music, as we can see in this example from Howard Shore's Lord of the Rings soundtrack, Rivendell, where the leitmotif of the Elvish city consists in a major at 6 and an F major at 6, which both sound very defined and interesting in terms of harmonic timbre. This type of harmony is not to be confused with an inversion of a 7th chord. Even though the sound is identical, if contextualized, they are applied in two different ways. Chords which surpasses the 5 tones are usually considered either polyfunctional or chordioids, as they contain more than 5 notes and are highly timbrical chords. Any unclassifiable chord can really be a chordioid. Take for example this piece I wrote some years ago for an indie game. Here, we don't really have tonal functions working to create tension and release, we have what could be erroneously called a C7 sus 4 and 2, which alternates with the second type of chord, but built on F, a fourth apart, which in fact kind of resolves any tension built inside the precedent chordoid. Another type of chordoid is the chord built at the beginning of One Winged Angel by Nobuo Ematsu, which is the superimposition of two fifths, D, A and E B flat with the bass alternating the E and B flat, highlighting the triton, to give the piece a more menacious sound, reminiscent of the Wrath of Spring by Stravinsky.
In classical music, this type of harmonies, built on superimposed tonalities, modes, functions of unclassifiable chords, are defined as harmonic fields, campi harmonici in Italian, which are the movements between neighboring dissonances and unclassifiable chords. In this theoretic context, we will prefer to use harmonic fields to chordioids, as I believe it better indicates both the vertical and horizontal nature of this type of harmonies, while chordioids emphasize the vertical aspect only. Music is so complex that reducing it only to the vertical aspects kind of invalidates the way of thinking of many composers all throughout history, which used to think more horizontally than vertically, and also invalidates the nature itself of music, which doesn't exist only vertically, but takes in consideration also the timbre of every sound. Take for example Debussy's writing, in which he used timbre to recreate the thought of an organ, by orchestrating his works with added fifths, thirds and octaves. Those harmonies are not to be thought as parallel fifths, but like the organ's registers. Classifying those as chordioids will invalidate Debussy's timbrical characteristics. With harmonic fields and the clever use of implicit tensions and releases in tonal functions we saw in the previous lesson, we can begin to grasp how harmony after Richard Wagner became so intangible and difficult to grasp. Infinite modulations, the many meanings that an harmony can take, leads to complex harmonies which expands the limits of tonality and allows us to make our music more complex and profound. Contemporary authors like Richard Strauss and later authors like Claude Debussy, Maurice Ravel and Igor Stravinsky will further push harmony to unknown territories and limits. In the next lesson, we will do an overview of 900's tonality. See ya!